St. Petersburg, Pinellas County, Florida, lies between the Gulf of Mexico and Tampa Bay. Famously known as Sunshine City, it is a place packed with shops, restaurants, markets and attractions, such as the Salvador Dali Museum and Fort de Soto Park along the beautiful coast. On the afternoon of Halloween 1969, workers wander the streets of St. Petersburg seeking oak seedlings. At approximately 1.45 p.m. in Woodland, 15 to 20 yards from a car park at the rear of the Oyster Bar, located at 4234th Street South, sat a black trunk, bearing a label which read Non-Breakable Trunk Company, the headquarters of which were based in Manhattan and later the Bronx. Curious, one of the park department's employees attempted to open the trunk, but found it was locked. He contacted police who managed to open the trunk and what lay inside sent chills down their spines. The decomposing body of a woman was wrapped in plastic, sealed with masking tape. Police confirmed that the female was a homicide victim who had suffered blunt force trauma to the head and had been strangled by a 20 inch long red or maroon bolo tie, which had been wrapped around the neck at least twice. Her estimated date of death was between two to three days prior to being discovered and the official cause of death was manual strangulation by ligature. Jane Doe was a Caucasian female with her age estimated to have been between 25 to 35. She stood at 5 feet 9 inches tall and weighed 130 pounds. Her eyes were brown and her hair, which was dark brown and approximately 8 to 10 inches long, was pinned up with several hair rollers. There was evidence that she had given birth during her life, although was not recent to her death, and she also suffered a mild gallbladder disorder. She had no scars or any evidence of any bone fractures or tattoos. However, she did have three hairless moles, one on her cheek, one on her right forearm and one on her thigh. The deceased did not have any piercings and her fingernails were noted to have been clean and well cared for. Investigating her teeth, it was found that the unidentified woman had crowding and four teeth missing. She possessed a partial upper front dental plate covering four front teeth and two side teeth. All four of her wisdom teeth had been surgically removed and it was stated she had poor oral hygiene, which suggested that she was possibly from a working class background. Found on the body was a pale green slip-on pyjama top with a floral design and lace around the collar. No more clothes, shoes or jewellery were recovered, however the woman's ring finger showed signs of a ring impression. Isotope tests were conducted and it was concluded that the woman in the trunk, as she came to be known, was not a Florida native and had been born in the southeast of the United States and spent later years of her life in northern areas of the southeast. Jane Doe was blood type A positive and her DNA, dentals and fingerprints are all available for comparison. Following the news of the woman's discovery, police received over 50 phone calls from people who believed they knew the deceased, but all tips turned out to be unrelated to Jane Doe. Many people were interviewed and authorities checked with various luggage manufacturers in order to find out where the trunk was purchased from and shared case details with the FBI, but unfortunately few answers were found. 
Jane Doe has been ruled out as Peggy Byers Baisden, who was 23 when she disappeared from a bar in Eaton Park, Lakeland, Florida, on the 2nd of April 1965, and 21-year-old Emily Richards, who vanished from Inglewood, California, who ceased contact with her family in 1963, although was found to have married in Los Angeles in 1966. The fate of these two women are a mystery to this day. The body of the unknown woman was exhumed to conduct further examination and police are hopeful that there will be a breakthrough in the case. 50 years on and St Petersburg Jane Doe remains nameless. There are many questions which lie unanswered. With advanced forensic techniques, perhaps any fingerprints or DNA evidence within the trunk could be further analysed and provide further clues. Why was she murdered? As it appeared that she may have been married, who was her husband and was he somehow involved? What was the weapon which caused the trauma to the victim's skull? Was she ever reported as a missing person? What is Jane Doe's true identity? Thank you.